The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, this is Haley at Topaz Labs. We are so excited to be back again with our friend Joel Wolfson to present Less Noise, More Detail with Denoise AI. Before we begin, I have a couple things to go over. If you're having audio or video issues, please try to log out and log back in or minimizing and maximizing your go-to webinar viewer. That usually clears up those types of issues. If you're still having issues, please make sure you've closed all other applications that might be using Flash Player or taking up a lot of memory on your computer. It's just me today in the chat messenger, so I'll try to get to as many questions as I can. Uh, just remember that you can't see your question until it's been answered. Um, for this webinar, we sourced some frequently asked questions about Denoise AI from our support team and worked with Joel to incorporate a few of those into today's session. But if you still have questions, no worries. We'll have Joel's contact information and our Topaz support link at the end of the webinar so you can reach out. We're keeping today's session under about 45 minutes for those of you who've requested shorter sessions so we can make the most of your time. So we'll start wrapping up around 3.40 uh, with our remaining announcements. We'll also have a special discount code at the end of today's presentation, so you'll definitely want to take advantage of that. Now I'd like to introduce Joel for those of you who have not had the pleasure of watching him present one of our webinars. Joel loves teaching as much as shooting. He shares his 30 years of experience with photographers of all levels by way of his workshops, one-on-one -on -one trainings, webinars, articles, blogs, and speaking engagements. His articles have been translated for use in more than 30 countries. If you want to work with Joel in person and come back energized with spectacular images, join him on one of his workshops. He conducts workshops in the U.S. and worldwide and offers private workshops and online interactive critiques of your work. But for now, I'm going to turn it over to Joel. Joel, are you with us? I am here and ready to go. Okay. Let me switch everything over. All right. Are you able to see my screen? There it is. Okay, great. Well, welcome everyone and thanks for joining us today. I'm excited about this new version of uh, Denoise AI. And as the title says, today's webinar is how less is more with Denoise or perhaps more accurately less and more in the sense that we get less noise and more detail. And now we also get batch processing and also the addition of controls for chroma noise which can be adjusted separately from luminance noise if we choose to do so. Uh, a lot of useful new capabilities in this 2.0 version. I'll show you different ways to use this on some different types of images. Uh, before we jump into it, just a reminder that I have a number of educational resources, many of which are free. This includes articles and reviews, short videos, my newsletter, um, archives of these webinars, my workshop schedule, et cetera. So the best way to take advantage of these is just to uh, sign up for my email list. And I send out one newsletter, and I guess newsletter is kind of a stretch. They're pretty short and sweet. I try not to inundate your inbox. So um, on any page on my website, you'll see this. Uh, you can just put your email address and first name. That's all I need. Just make sure you choose either fine art news or photo news or both. Uh, you got to select one or both of those or you don't get anything. So enough said about that. Let's uh, talk about Denoise AI. If I get to my next slide here, there we go. So before I go on actual images, I just kind of want to give you all a background. Um, the starting point can be from lots of different programs. Uh, you can launch from Photoshop and that of course allows you layers and opacity, Lightroom on one. Uh, Studio 2, it will be in an update, so that's coming soon. And you can obviously operate it standalone, and that allows you to open and save and batch um, without using any other apps. Uh, down on the bottom is a list of sort of the main purposes, and you'll see this in just a minute, but there are two models, uh, AI Clear and Denoise. At the bottom of this list, I also have the batch processing, but I will go through all this with examples. Um, one of the most uh, 
common questions, <clears throat> excuse me, I've gotten about this is, um, well, Joel, Denoise has sharpening in it, so when do I use that and when do I use Sharpen AI? Do I need both, et cetera? So I'm, this is sort of the nutshell uh, to condense it down to, to what the differences are and why, why you might use one or the other or both. So Denoise AI, of course, reduces noise, but it also does an amazing job with capture sharpening. And that's actually my main use of Denoise AI. I really love the AI Clear. I use that a lot. And then when I want more control, I can use the Denoise uh, model in that same program. Now, Sharpen AI, yes, you can do sharpening. And you noticed in, in the, uh, sorry, the parenthesis here, I have that it's a little bit slower than um, Denoise. And by that, I mean um, AI Clear. This is just if you're doing overall sharpening. Now, where Sharpen AI really shines, I think, is in, in fixing uh, focus issues um, and motion issues. And again, you can use those in different programs. This slide right here is not as complicated as it looks because this is just essentially a decision tree. And this is um, sort of my recommendation on where in the workflow you want to use Denoise AI, which essentially is early on in the workflow. So you can do some broad adjustments um, if, you need, if you need to. So if you have an image that you've purposely underexposed to maintain highlight detail, you might want to do those adjustments in your raw file in your image processor before you do um, the noise reduction. Otherwise, it's pretty much early on in the process. And so this is just the process here. If you have no noise or moderate noise, you're doing sharpening, AI clear. Um, on this side, if you do have um, a lot of noise, or maybe more importantly, just if you want precise control, is to use denoise. Then when you get down here, do you have focus issues? If you do, that's where you definitely want to use sharpen AI. Um, it's pretty amazing what it can do. And um, I think Topaz, if they haven't already, is going to post um, to post a, a webinar I did that that includes that. So I'm not going to go into a lot of depth here. Um, I'd like to just get into some images right away here so you can see how this thing works. So this first image I'm, I'm going to do is, uh, this is a landscape I shot from a helicopter in Kauai. And it's a typical landscape from a technical standpoint in that there are a range of tones from highlights in the water to deep shadows in the forest and uh, behind the waterfall up here. here. Let me, I'll zoom in so you can see. Um, there's, there's an abundance of fine detail in this image. So then the question is, why would I use denoise if I'm not eliminating, uh, sorry, if I'm not eliminating noise per se? I mean, if you look at it, there really isn't much in the way of noise here. We're looking at it 100%. Um, I can go up to 200% and you can see it's, it's a fairly clean image. So the, the answer comes with AI clear. Um, and that is to do uh, some capture sharpening. So I want to show you different ways of getting into Denoise AI. So I'm, even though I'm in Lightroom here, what I'm going to do is just pop this image into Photoshop so I can show you how to use Denoise AI from Photoshop. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, then I'll show you from Lightroom. And after that, I'll show you um, how to do it from another processor. All right. So. A uh, number of ways from Lightroom to, to pop in there, but I'm going to use the photo menu here. If I go to edit in, there's Photoshop at the very top. Uh, the other way you can do this is just to right click and it's the same menu, edit in, and we go to Photoshop. Now, I always like to do this, edit a copy so that I'm not working with my original. And so it'll make a copy of this image. It'll open it in Photoshop and then I'll show you um, if you're starting in Photoshop, uh, where you go from here. So here's our image. I'm going to go up to in Photoshop. I'm going to um, I'm going to ultimately go up to the filter menu here to to go into denoise. But I want to show you another step first that I always recommend, and that is if you follow me down here to the lower right, um, I'll drag and drop this onto the dog gear icon. Um, the other way you can do this is from the layer menu and and just do duplicate layer. So, um, and I like to rename those. So 
I'm just going to call this denoise AI, and I'll put two in there so I know I did it with version two. But basically, this just tells me what I did if I ever go back to this um, Photoshop file a year from now, and I'm looking at the layers and wondering what I did in that layer. So I'm going to go up to the filter menu in the upper left here, um, click on that, go down to Topaz Labs, and then I'm going to move over to the right and down to Denoise AI. And what's going to happen is um, it's going to um, launch essentially that layer that I just created in Photoshop. Um, I'm clicking on AI Clear and Auto. Don't worry about that at the moment. Um, I want to run through the interface really quick before I get into the tools. So across the top, um, you have all these tools have to do with viewing the image. Um, then over on the right is your navigator and then down on the right here are all the tools. Um, you can choose to unlock this auto update. You notice if I if I move this to a different part of the image, let's say, um, you'll get this generating preview thing. Um, I'm in the AI clear, which um, actually works really fast, so it doesn't take long to re-render that uh, image with the sharpening applied. Now you can see um, the interesting thing about the AI, it's really smart and it knows uh, when there's noise and when there isn't. And it leaves, in this case, um, I don't have noise to speak of, so it did sharpening and you notice it did it very quickly. And if you look at some areas like, for instance, these trees here and you go over here, you can really make out every little branch, uh, the texture and the rocks, you can, you can count the leaves. Now, it's still a fairly detailed image on the left here, but it's amazing how much detail is really there once you bring it out with AI Clear. Uh, for those of you that don't know this already, every camera um, is going to lose a little something in the translation, especially if it has a low pass filter. And most DSLRs have a low pass filter in front of the sensor, and that purposely blurs the image a little bit. Um, but even, even cameras that don't have them, like this camera that I use does not have one of those low-pass filters, um, you still get more image detail out of it when you run capture sharpening. So that's sort of an essential step and, and should be anyway in any workflow with every single image you're going to need capture sharpening. And, and this is the way I like to do it. I just, I just love this, um, this program for the AI Clear. Um, or I should say, I love the AI Clear in this program for this purpose. Um, so then, when you're done, well, um, I'll show you some options on the next on the next image. But so what I what I start out with is um, in an image that I'm just doing capture sharpening or just moderate noise reduction. Um, I start with AI Clear. I set it on auto. Now, if I click on Manual, it will show me what the auto used, what settings. So it used low for the remove noise, which makes sense. I have virtually no noise in this image. Um, the enhanced sharpness is uh, defaulted to low. Um, there's already a lot of detail in there. Um, and then the recover details I'll go into on the next image, but that essentially brings back information from the original image. And the chroma noise we'll get to towards the end of the webinar when we get into a more uh, challenging image. So this is this is supposed to be simple and easy, and it is for just doing capture sharpening. And uh, I'm going to hit the save, and what's going to happen is is it'll it'll apply what we just previewed here, and it'll it's doing it to that layer in Photoshop. So when it's done processing, it should drop us back into Photoshop, and um, and we it's processed this layer. So what I'm going to do real quick um, is magnify this. In fact, I'll go up to 200 percent. And if I go down to the lower right and click on the eyeball, it will turn off that layer. And now you can see what it looks like before the sharpening. Here, I'll click it once more. And I know there's a little delay over the internet. Now you should be able to see the, the after here. So that's that, pretty simple. I'll pop back into Lightroom. And you know what, here, I can do a side-by-side -side here in Lightroom with these. And let's um, let's go to two to one, and that way you can. This is the actual finished processed image. It's not just the preview, so you can see it's pretty much identical to what the preview is showing us. You can, you know, make out these uh, 
these little strands of water, all the branches, count the leaves, etc. So very, very nice detail on that. So let's go to a completely different type of image now. And what I want to do here is um, go to a portrait so that you can see how it works on the different image and an image that has more noise or has noise problems essentially. Um, so this one um, I shot in, uh, well, obviously Head and Shoulders portrait, and I shot this in Monet's garden in Giverny, France, so that is real bamboo in the background. And um, <clears throat> it was overcast, so I had a nice light for a portrait. Uh, so the quality of light was good, but there wasn't a ton of light for the depth of field I wanted to be able to make out uh, the fact that there's bamboo. And I also wanted a shutter speed that would handle my five-year-old moving all around. And so, Basically, I ended up using a fairly high ISO. You can see 12,800 there, and I'll zoom in so you can see. Now, considering it's 12,800, it's, it's pretty good, except obviously we have a lot of noise. And as you can see, there's both luminance noise, which is sort of, sort of the gray speckles, and, and chroma noise, which is the uh, magenta and green um, areas that you're seeing in the image. So we're gonna see how uh, denoise does with this. Now, so for this one, I'm going to launch from directly from Lightroom into denoise AI. It's the same menu as before. I can use the photo menu or I can right click. Um, I go to edit in, and this time I'm going to go directly into denoise. Um, I, you know, as long as I'm here, I'm going to show you a little uh, Lightroom tip. And for those of you using Lightroom, um, Lightroom really only allows you, besides Photoshop, to add one other main. Uh, editing program you can add a bunch more but it just throws them in alphabetical order so if you want something that you use frequently at the top you just rename it put a little tilde in the front of it and it'll automatically pop to the top there so there you go free free lightroom tip so i'm going to click on denoise ai again i'm going to edit a copy click on the edit button here and it's going to open denoise pop me in now there's one more part to the interface here that i didn't wasn't able to show you before and that's on the bottom is you can see this bar going across that has all the information about this image, the name of it, uh, what settings I'm using, and this percentage thing is just um, once you process it, it gives you a progress bar and tells you how long it took. Now, that isn't all that exciting, but when you're doing batch processing, it comes in handy because it allows you to navigate to different images and do different settings, and I'll show you that a little later on. So here we go. Um, I'm in the split view up here, and they look the same right now because I haven't really done any processing yet. I'm going to go to AI Clear, and again, the auto, and see what it looks like. And you can see very quickly, dramatic difference here. Um, let me just move it over so you can see eyelashes and hair and stuff. Um, I've gotten rid of all that noise, both the chroma noise and the luminance noise. Um, I can make out the eyelashes very clearly here. I can make out um, all this uh, fly away hair. Here, I'll go over here so you can see it's pretty dramatic. I mean, it, this thing never ceases to amaze me. I mean, look at all that noise over on the left here. Compare that to the right and I can still see all these fly away hairs. Um, the only thing is, to me anyway, her face is looking, uh, has lost a little dimension. It looks kind of flat. The, the skin's almost too smooth, almost mannequin-like. Um, and mainly I've just kind of lost some shape in the features. And so what I'm gonna do is click on the manual here. So that shows me what it decided it was gonna do. And I'm gonna make a few little changes. So <clears throat> one way to get the shape back is to do recover details. If you think of that as sort of a copy of your original image before the noise reduction and sharpening, um, you can use this slider to bring that information back. Now, if I bring it all the way over, it's going to look almost like the original and it's too noisy again. So what I'm going to do is just give it a little bit and I'm going to go maybe about 20% here. Voila. So now I've got shape back in the face. I can make out you know, shadows and the nose and the, the mouth and lips and everything. It's just got just that little bit more dimension to it, which I like without introducing a lot of noise. Um, the, other, the other little change I'll make just to show you how this works, um, I'm going to go over here so we can see some hair and eyelashes together. 
and that is this enhanced sharpness. Um, the removed noise is pretty self-explanatory. It's just low, medium, and high. Um, when we get into denoise, you'll see that you have sliders and you can make things more precise when you want to. So I'm just going to click on high and just kind of watch carefully in the hair here as I do this. Um, it's, it's pretty subtle, but if you just want to get that little extra amount of sharpness, um, gosh, look at these eyelashes. This, this thing just is so cool. Anyway, um, now I'm going to hit the save and it will save this back into uh, Lightroom now. It actually, what it's saving is the changes to the file. If you remember, I created uh, a copy of the file so that I wouldn't be um, changing my original at all. So when it's done processing here, it drops us back into Lightroom. And what I'll do is give you another side by side here. And you can see, even, even without magnifying this, um, look how much cleaner this looks to this one. And certainly um, when I magnify it, um, you see a big difference. Let me go to one to one because we didn't actually look at it at 100%. So, um, you know, this, if you were to make a big print and really scrutinize it, you can see you've, you've got all the detail and we totally got rid of that noise. And it's so fast and so easy. Um, and if you're doing a whole bunch of images, you can use the batch processor and I'll be showing that shortly. So what I want to do now is I'm, I'm going to just uh, quit out of Lightroom here and I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to launch on one um, just so you can see that I can go into it from, go into Denoise AI from another processor. I know Lightroom is popular, but there are an awful lot of people out there using on one photo raw. So I did want to show that. Um, it's a great program um, and it's got a database in it for tracking your images. It's just, it's, it's um, similar in what it does to Lightroom. But so, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, for those of you that are, now, you, now you'll know how to do this. So what you can do, it, not too different from Lightroom, um, is you can do it from a menu. In this case, it's the file menu. And if you notice, it's just listed all the different applications here that, that I can jump into. Um, I can also do the right click and you'll see the same thing down here. So um, let me go back to the menu just because this is easier to see. What I want to point out is if, let's say you're doing this and you, you say, hey, Denoise AI isn't in here. Well, you just go down to send to other application and then you navigate uh, through the Finder if you're on a Mac or Explorer if you're on Windows, just navigate to your application uh, to Denoise AI, open it up, and once you do it once, it'll be in this list. So I've obviously I've used it before, so I've got it in here, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it in Denoise AI. Before I do that, let's look at this um, horrible image. <laughs> so um, this is a shot I did in the middle of the night by moonlight, and if you look over here, it's pretty high ISO, 16,000. But um, exacerbating uh, the problem is here. I'll zoom in. Look at all this noise. Um, so rather than throw this away, I thought I'd throw it at Denoise AI just, just to see if, um, if Denoise could salvage it. Um, this is quite a challenge. We've got a horrendous amount of noise here, and we also have a lot of um, uh, chroma noise. So you see all this magenta and, and green or cyan mixed in with um, the rest of the image. Now, one of the reasons, that even though it's not a whole lot higher ISO than the previous image, um, it looks worse because we have a lot of dark areas. If you look at the snow, you're not seeing a lot of the noise, and that's typical. You're not going to notice noise and highlights as much. Um, but certainly in shadows and dark areas, you see a ton of it here. So now that, now that you see <laughs> what we're dealing with, I am going to go over to the file menu here, and I am going to go into Denoise AI. Right, and I do want to um, do a copy here again, just like I did in, uh, when I launched it from Lightroom. And when Denoise AI comes up, of course, that's pretty much going to look the same as, um, as it did before. Excuse me, i got to try to save my voice here, so I'm just drinking some water in between a little bit. All right, so what I'm going to do here, um, in this case, there's a lot going on here, and I want to have 
as much control as possible. So um, this is on Denoise AI, and by the way, it, it typically defaults, Denoise AI defaults to the Denoise model as opposed to AI clear. Um, Topaz, I know you're listening, so on my wish list is a way to decide whether this defaults to Denoise AI or AI clear. So that said, I'm going to leave it on Denoise AI and I'm going to hit the auto just to see what it does. Now, what you're going to notice here is that uh, generating the preview takes longer. When you're in the, the, the Denoise model um, uh, is, is doing a lot more processing in the background, um, you have all those different controls and such. So um, you can see it's not bad. It got rid of some of the noise. Um, I'm going to hit the manual so I can see what it did. So it only it only put a little bit of remove noise on there. So I'm probably going to crank that up and I'm going to uncheck this for now so that it doesn't update every time I change this. But I'm going to take the uh, remove noise and I think, well, I'm not going to go too heavy handed. I'll, I'll try about 20 on here because it, um, it really does. I think uh sharpen i'll back off on that just a little bit that's probably close to where i wanted it and then again the original detail i i i'm going to do that just um because the noise removal sometimes mushes things a little bit i don't want to go very heavy-handed with this though um just because so i'm going to do similar to what i did with that other image and um then i think we'll move this to a different area just so you can see a little of everything here and now I'm going to hit the update the reason I uncheck that auto update is that every time you move one of these sliders or move the image around on the screen it's going to generate a new preview and um, in the case of the denoise AI that takes a little more time so I wait until I have everything set and you know that's looking pretty darn good and um, you can see, uh, if you compare the left here, um, it didn't get rid of all of that chroma noise, and we're going to use this slider for that in just a second, but you can see it did get rid of a lot of the noise, um, and it maintained a reasonable amount of detail in here, although I think we can maybe um, improve on that when we get rid of the chroma noise. So I'm going to take this chroma slider, and when I move that, it's going to bring another slider, which is the size. So the strength is just like it sounds. That's how strongly it applies the effect. The size is kind of like the radius and the sharpening um, filter, where it's it, this looks at each individual pixel, and the size is how much more around that pixel it's going to look at. So I want maximum effect here. I'm going to move that all the way over. And now I'm going to update. I think I'm going to update. Let's try moving it and see what happens. There we go. So again, this is going to take a few seconds, but I just want to see, uh, well, I want you guys to see what's going to happen. I want to see too uh, what happens with our, our chroma noise and chroma strength here. Wow. That did a pretty nice job. Um, you can see, uh, we got rid of all that chroma noise. Look over here and compare that. Uh, we did not lose um, the actual color of the sky, that, that midnight blue. And we've got um, a fair amount of detail. I mean, these are mostly silhouettes in the trees, but you can still, um, if you look at this, you can make out all those branches and stuff. So that's pretty good. I might just, I might try bumping the sharpening just a little bit to where it was. Let's, let's just see what happens there and then once uh, we do this I'm just gonna um, go ahead and save this off and then we'll do um, an a B comparison on on the real image so yeah that's looking pretty nice I think um, let me uh, well I'll I'll show you the rest once I save it because um, it then you don't have to wait for this to regenerate every time in fact I think I may have saved the other one I did on this. Let me see. So yeah, here we go. So I had the, those same parameters applied uh, um, the, on when I experimented on when I experimented with this earlier, 
And what I'm going to do is just compare these two. And let me blow that up uh, for you just a little bit. Okay, so hopefully you guys are seeing that now. And first of all, before I move it around on the image, take a, take a look down here in this field of snow and this rock over here, um, how nicely it sharpened everything. We're looking at 100% here. So, um, and there's nice detail in the trees. Um, I'm gonna move this down so that you can see. Um, wow. <laughs> Yep, I this thing not only salvaged it, it it uh, it made it a usable image. And let me uh, just for the heck of it, let me uh, just zoom in a little bit more here, and you can see. Look at the difference here. All this noise um, and how it got rid of it, including the chroma noise. Um, we've got, you know, it did a nice job sharpening uh, down in this field area here too. All right, so. Uh, it handled a difficult image pretty well, I would say. Um, I do want to show you um, another aspect of Denoise AI. And uh, let's see, we'll go to, I'll, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to open Denoise AI standalone now. So now you've seen it launched three different ways. Um, this is what it looks like uh, when you open it standalone. And I want to show you the batch capabilities because that is a really, really useful addition to this program and it makes it quite powerful. So I'm going to hit the open button and I'm just going to, let's see if I can find here. I have some pictures to edit. So this is a fire site I shot at sunrise. Um, I'm just going to select all of those. So this is just one use of batch processing you will find many ways to use the batch processing because there's going to be a lot of cases where you just want to do a bunch of images for various reasons and and potentially various settings and i'll show you how that works but anyway this is from a shoot where i had say 30 or 40 variations of this you know typical to a landscape shoot um, at sunrise or sunset the light is constantly changing and in this case um, the sky was constantly changing. So in um, the idea behind this right here, what I'm going to do is when I when I have a whole batch of images like this one, I, I had 30 or 40, um, I go through them very quickly after the shoot and I pick the ones that I like best and that's just my first pass. Then I do a second round where I pick my finals and, and at that point I'm only going to pick like one or two. Um, however, when I'm doing that in a regular image processor, say like on one or Lightroom, I may have to focus those, uh, sorry, um, sharpen those as I go along. Because if you look at on the left here, that looks a little blurry. And if I was trying to make a judgment on whether it's a keeper or not, um, I might reject it. But if you look over here where I've done the capture sharpening with AI Clear, um, Obviously, this is sharp enough to use. I'm looking at this at 100%, so that's pretty highly magnified. Now, I'll explain the um, how to set the batch processing. Um, so the idea here, of course, is when I'm done with this, um, I, then I can go through the images and, and I don't have to worry about sharpness being a factor. I can look at the things um, that are ultimately more important. The sharpness I want to be a given, but I'm going to be looking at the clouds and the lighting and that sort of thing. So for instance, if I go down to this image, you can see that, that the sky is completely different, it's brighter, um, the sun was coming up already, et cetera. So um, you notice um, when this says select all, whatever I do over here, let's say I switch this to manual, you notice all of a sudden all of these switched to manual. So all you have to do is just unselect these and then you can go through individually um, and if you want, different parameters on each one of these. I'll just change this one just to show you how. Um, so if I put that on manual, and let's say I want to go with high sharpness on this one, because it's maybe a little bit softer, and I'm going to bring the recover details back a little bit. And so now I'm, I'm happy with how this one looks. I'm going to leave the rest the same. And now you can see, if you look, they all have the same setting except this one that I changed. And like I say, of course, you can go through and, and change all these others. 
so now when I now you notice the button down here doesn't say save anymore it says start batch processing because I'm doing batches um, so that it knows what you're doing and it'll change accordingly <clears throat> here are my output options I think these are pretty self-explanatory the suffix that just it'll just pop that on the end of your file name um, I think the default just says denoise I put dn 2.0 just so I know uh, what I did it with um, you can choose to save it in the same directory or if you click no, you can choose your path, et cetera. I think these are all pretty self-explanatory. You can change your file format um, and you can choose whether or not you change your color profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit process. And when I do this, now you'll see these status bars. And um, as you can see, AI clear is pretty darn fast. That took seven seconds. So I'm guessing the rest of these are gonna take a similar amount of time. Um, I actually find this handy because um, with the different settings, you saw, for instance, when I went to Denoise AI, it took longer. And with different, um, different file sizes, and especially just changing the models and the settings in here, it'll give you an idea how long it's gonna take. Um, the other thing, too, is I can, I can, while this is processing, I can let it go in the background and I can go and, and do other work while that is processing. But what I'm gonna do here, let's see, I'll go see if I can find my, my folder here, there it is, Topaz. And let's see, I think I had it go in the same folder, so we'll open this folder. Okay, so there we are, the, those are all done now. You can, you can see them all up here. I'll just go back there so you can see they're all done now and it tells me how long each one took. It took a second longer for the one we did in manual. So now that I've done that, um, I've accomplished my goal and what I can do is just open these up. Um, I can uh, magnify it up so I'm at 100% and I can just go through and look at these and you know, if I'm trying to decide between this one and this one, I can go in and compare and do all the things. And now, now my sharpening is not a factor anymore. So if I can, I, so now I can look at the sky and make decisions on what I really need to make decisions on. So there you have it. Um, I think I, I pretty much covered a lot of the uses. Um, in summation, you can, let's just take a look at it while I'm talking about it. Um, and let's see, I'm going to remove all these images and we'll just open one just for the heck of it. Just so you can see the interface here. So um, you can look at it different ways up here. The one thing I didn't mention, I guess, is this brighten. If you really um, want to see, I think this will work anyway. Let's see what happens. Oh, I'm in the denoise AI. That'll take a little longer. So. It, it brightens the image, so if you want to see the noise in, in brighter areas, you can use that. I, don't, I guess I don't use it that much. Um, you can look at the view um, as a single image, and you can pop back and forth between your original and your processed image. And um, I think that covers it pretty well, so I'm gonna open it up to questions, and Haley, hopefully I finished to give you enough time. <laughs> I think we're pretty much right on time, actually. That was an incredible presentation. Um, I was trying to get to as many questions as I could in the chat box, and it actually looks better on my screen if I answer them privately because it's a very small window. Um, but for for most people, um, the question that I saw a lot was, how do I get the latest update? So we changed our in-app installer recently, so that's why you won't always see it pop up into Denoise. So to grab the latest update, you'll want to visit the website. So you'll just want to go to topazlabs.com slash downloads, and it's just one more click from there. So it's super fast. Um, but yeah, that's how you'll get the latest update. And that also will kind of answer those questions too about um, not being able to see the chroma noise slider. Um, so you'll want to be on 2.0 for this latest update. Um, let me switch over my screen because I have a couple things to share with you guys.
Okay, um, since we are almost out of time, um, I wanted to give a few more additional resources as well as this coupon code. This 20% discount code is JoelWeb0120, and that expires February 6th. Um, and this is good for any product in our shop or your total purchase. Um, if you have any questions for Joel, you can reach him at info at joelwolfson.com. And then I saw a lot of you um, saying that you were checking out his website as well, which is joelwolfson.com. So I think I got to about 90% of your questions. There seem to be quite a few coming in right now. So if we're not able to get to you, um, you can contact us at our help center at topazlabs.com slash help. We have several articles there, and then you can also submit a support ticket um, for a little more personalized help. Um, let's see. I think that just about covers it. Can I ask you a question? Yes. So that, uh, as I understand it, Denoise AI is on sale right now. Can they use the 20% off of the sale price? Yes, that's a great question. Um, yes, Denoise is on sale for $59.99. So that's down from our usual $79.99. And yes, you can use this discount code um, off the sale price. And then we also have our utility bundle on sale right now, um, and that includes Denoise, Sharpen, Gigapixel, and JPEG to RAW. Um, so that's on sale for $195, I believe, and you can also use the discount code on the, on the utility bundle. Okay, um, and also for those of you asking, we will be sending out the recording for anyone who wants to rewatch it or um, for those of you who signed up and were, had to leave a little bit early, um, we will send out the recording as well as upload it to our YouTube channel. All right. Joel, thank you so much again for such a wonderful presentation. Well, thank you for having me and thank you all for joining me. I know some of you are in some time zones where it's crazy hours. <laughs> and I really appreciate you all, um, whatever time zone, um, attending the webinar. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. And you all have a great day or evening, whatever time it is there. Thanks. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.